I uh, just got back from um, the weekend rally in Wisconsin organized by Mike Lindell. This was the rally for free speech and it was fantastic. It was huge. Um, Mike actually sent his plane uh, to get uh, Danielle and me and picked us up uh, in Texas um, along with some of the other speakers. Now, the, the mood there, I don't know, six, seven thousand people was electric. Uh, people were energized. They wanted to know what's going on. They wanted to know what they can do, what can be done about it, what to look forward to. And most of the speakers uh, focused on the issue of digital censorship. But I introduced also another theme, which I think is just as important and ties in with the issue of free speech, which is that our media have become organs of propaganda. It's a very scary notion that you don't have a real media in a country because the media is an essential check uh, on power. The media are the people who are supposed to ask the questions. But do you see them asking the questions? Look at the media at one of these Biden press conferences. They're like a cheerleading section. They might as well be paid by the DNC, even if they aren't. Um, so you don't have that kind of uh, scrutiny that is an essential part of democracy. This is not just a matter that the media is biased or that they don't understand. They do understand. And if you give them facts that are damaging to their ideological side, they won't report them. And if you tell them lies, things that they know are lies that promote their ideological side, they will print them. They will feature them. Now, I want to begin by doing, and actually my work is somewhat done for me by an article uh, by Michael Goodwin in the New York Post. He's talking about some of the top lies that we've heard over the past four years, and it's kind of helpful to do a little summary of those so we're reminded of what big lies these are and how widely they were repeated and how to this date many of them have not been corrected. No apology, no correction, no scrutiny, no self-examination, none of it. Um, here's lie number one. Well, the most recent one. No, Trump did not order the clearing of Lafayette Park so he could go around to the church and brandish his Bible. Uh, that was refuted by the inspector general himself, a guy, by the way, who served under Obama. Number two, uh, the lie about the lab leak hypothesis. That was dismissed as disinformation, dismissed as um, as a debunked conspiracy theory. It never was a conspiracy theory. And more importantly, the rival theory, the idea that it came from a wet market, COVID-19 did, in Wuhan, never had an iota of evidence going for it. No one tested people in the, in the wet market and said, look, these were some of the earliest guys to get COVID. None of that. There was no evidence going for it. So think about it. Without a shred of evidence, um, the media put out the idea that this theory had been proven, proven to such a degree that any rival theory could be dismissed and people who, who, who indulged in it could be banned, could be demonetized, could be taken down. And Facebook and other digital platforms took down millions of posts that advocated what in retrospect is a legitimate theory. Here we go. Trump colluded with Russia to win in 2016 and might even himself be a Russian agent. The whole Mueller investigation investigation lasting two years. Um, and yet it came up with the opposite conclusion. And then the opposite conclusion was muted or buried in the media coverage. Remember the lie about Trump's Muslim ban. He's banning Muslims from coming into America. Another flat out lie. Um, Muslims were coming into America the whole time. Uh, and the restriction applied to certain countries that were known perpetrators of terrorism. What about the lie that AOC uh, promulgated going to the border with adoring photographers all around her? This was the lie that the uh, that the Trump administration was were putting kids in cages. Remember that phrase, kids in cages. And then it came out rather inconveniently that those cages were built by Obama. They dated back to the Obama years. Even the photos that were used were photos from the Obama era. And so the best that the media does in these situations is that they go dead silent. When they go dead silent on an issue, it means that they were lying, they were flat out wrong, they don't want to admit it, the best they will do is move on to the next lie. Here's the next lie. Ukraine impeachment, the impeachment that Trump was somehow uh, calling upon the Ukraine to kind of go after his political opponents. In fact, in the most muted terms, Trump was calling for something that turns out to be completely legitimate, which is to say, what the heck was Ukraine doing in funneling huge amounts of money to the Biden family 
through Hunter Biden. This is the key point. It's not the Hunter Biden scandal. Hunter Biden is merely the conduit to the big guy, Joe Biden. Joe Biden's the guy who was directing the operation. And we know that because he's directing other family members to other countries. It isn't just about Hunter Biden. Here's James Biden getting deals in China. Here's Frank Biden cutting deals in Costa Rica and all over South America. The whole Biden family is in on it. And the press covers for him and blocks information about this and advocates for censorship on digital platforms to prevent other press, in this case, the New York Post, from talking about it. So then we go to Hunter Biden's laptop, another massive scandal, again, protected by the media, unreported by the media. And to this day, the media shows very little interest in looking to see what's on that laptop. On we go with Tony Bobulinski and then the lies about voter ID laws. They're the new Jim Crow. No, they're not the new Jim Crow. Jim Crow was basically a form of, uh, of using laws to, for, to have racial intimidation of blacks and other minorities. These are voter ID laws. These are laws that basically say things like all voter uh, mailboxes have to be supervised and have to have someone there at all times so they can't be tampered with. The lesson I draw from all this, and I said this to the crowd at the Frank um, speech rally, was I said, don't believe the media even when what they say is true. And this may seem like a little extreme statement. People may go, what do you mean, Dinesh? Don't believe the media even when what they say is true. That seems like a, a little bit of a, uh, uh, an overstatement, but it's not. Because think about it this way. Think of a guy who is a habitual liar, a chronic liar. Now, this is not a person who lies all the time, but this is a guy who lies a lot. Let's say he lies 60% of the time or 75% of the time. Now, yeah, admittedly in the other 25% or the other 40 percent. He is telling the truth. But who has the time to be able to tease out one from the other? Who has the time to be able to say, in this particular case, did he happen to tell the truth? No, it's too much trouble. The guy is a known liar. Don't believe a word that he says at all, even if it's true. And I think this is the posture we're driven to with the media. When the media gets, gets troubled, something very worrisome is going on, you should think something very good is going on. The reason they're, they're upset is because their ideology is being undermined. When the media conversely gets excited, they go, oh, we're really happy with Liz Cheney. We're really happy with Mitt Romney. Beware of Liz Cheney. Beware of Mitt Romney. Why? Because the reason the left is cheering those people is that they are doing the left's bidding. By the way, the moment they stop doing the left's bidding, they will cease to be the left's favorite Republican or the left's favorite conservative. Um, we need to develop a new media in this country uh, and a new media that not only provides a different point of view, but that is able to reach the vast majority of the American people. Uh, I've publicly and actually directly to Trump urged him to be a part of doing that. I think that that is a permanent service that he can do for the country, help us to build media channels that reach not hundreds, not thousands, not even tens of thousands, not even millions but tens of millions of Americans so we can help undo the constant, chronic, lying damage that is done to this country and to public information, the very lifeblood of a democracy by our dishonest mainstream media.